Harbingers of death. Eaters of rotting flesh. And, to most, a face only a mother could love. The turkey vulture, Cathartes Aura, along with all of its other buzzard brethren, have to contend with a particularly nasty reputation. Thankfully, this reputation isn't ubiquitous, as in some cultures, vultures represent things such as rebirth and cleansing. In fact, the genus name Cathartes comes from the Greek word catharsis, which means to purify or cleanse. And the name is more than earned. While the mere thought of eating carrion is enough to turn most of our stomachs, it's this very act that helps reduce disease prevalence in ecosystems, and helps reduce undesirable population growth of certain species. And, like a garbage man on strike, the importance of their custodial duties are incredibly evident in their absence. An anti-inflammatory drug known as diclofenac became increasingly popular in India in the 1990s for cattle rearing. Unfortunately, it proved to be incredibly toxic to their native vultures. Their deceased cattle were let out to rot, and the consumption of this tainted flesh has led to one of the most dramatic population declines in recorded history. India once had what was estimated to be 40 million vultures, and that has crashed to roughly a hundred thousand. Depending on the species, it's been either a 97% to a 99.9% .9 population decline. The increased carrion on the land resulting from the crash, combined with changing policies on how feral dogs are managed, has led to an increase in their populations, which is problematic considering that dogs in the area are the major vector for rabies, which kills 25 to 30,000 people in India annually, the most of any country in the entire world. India's vulture decline has also impeded certain religious practices. Most of the remaining Zoroastrianists in the world live in India, and traditionally, they would place their dead on structures called Towers of Silence, where they would be eaten by vultures. However, without vultures, this method was no longer viable. On a more optimistic note, though, thanks to some government funding, sanctuaries and breeding facilities are allowing this practice to return to some areas in India. Swinging it back to North America and our particular bird of interest, the turkey vulture is thankfully doing considerably better than its Indian counterparts. The IUCN has it listed as a species of least concern, and depending on the sources you look at, it's either seen as having a stable or steadily rising population. This species is incredibly widespread throughout the Americas, and, as one might expect of a creature of this large of a range, it is highly tolerant of different types of habitats. Most species of birds don't exactly have senses of smell to write home about. It generally isn't required for their lifestyle. Vultures, however, are an exception. They need a keen sense of smell so they can locate corpses on the ground while they soar in the skies above. Turkey vultures, it turns out, are an exception within an exception when it comes to strong sniffers. A recent study compared the olfactory bulbs of the turkey vulture with another sympatric species, the black vulture. While turkey vultures have smaller brains, on average, their olfactory bulbs were four times the size of the black vulture, and whether speaking in absolute or comparative terms, it was found that turkey vultures have the largest olfactory bulbs of any bird in the world. The authors went on to hypothesize that it is this incredible sense of smell that has led to turkey vultures becoming the most widely distributed vultures in the world. Besides their incredible sense of smell, turkey vultures have a series of other novel characteristics that aid them in their lifestyle. Their short broad wings have a low wing load, which allows them to effortlessly soar in the skies using air currents and thermals. By doing this, they can heavily reduce the amount of flapping they have to do, which is incredibly energy intensive. Their iconic bald head actually exists for the sake of cleanliness. It's not uncommon for turkey vultures to insert their entire head and neck into a corpse to get the piece they want, and a lack of feathers makes keeping clean a lot easier. For the sake of convenience, let's rewind that shot and take a closer look at the vulture's feet, because there's two important things I want to talk about. 
Notice that white stuff on its legs? Well, unsurprisingly, that's poop. There are two primary reasons why scientists think that turkey vultures will defecate or mute on themselves. The first is for the sake of thermoregulation. By pooping on themselves, they can actually cool themselves off. The second is a little more bizarre. While you and I probably wouldn't think that defecating on ourselves would be a proper way to wash up before a meal, for turkey vultures, it's a little bit different. Their excrement is actually incredibly acidic, so by pooping on their legs before they go feet first into their meal, they can actually prevent dragging out additional bacteria. A little gross, but pretty neat. While I wouldn't want one to say, land on my face, Comparatively speaking, of course, turkey vulture talons are rather small and blunt in comparison to other birds of prey. That's because they're used more for walking and grasping carcasses rather than tearing flesh or grabbing and flying off of things. Before we end the video, I'd like to throw just a few more fast facts at you about turkey vultures. This is most likely a juvenile or young adult. We can tell because his head is darker or more ashen than the iconic pink we're used to seeing in mature adults. And what it's doing is thermoregulation. By putting its wings out, it increases its surface area to volume ratio, and its dark wings absorb the heat from the sun, heating it up before it takes flight. Speaking of juveniles, turkey vultures lay one to three eggs, though two is typical. And unlike most other birds of prey, they're highly social animals. A group of vultures is called either a venue, a vault, or a committee, and in flight they're called a kettle. And that's about all I have for you today. I hope you come out of this video with a newfound admiration for these incredible creatures. They honestly do so much for us, and in return they don't really get the respect they deserve. If you live in a part of the world that has healthy vulture populations, you should be grateful because not everyone has that. If you liked this video, and you'd like to see more, click on one of the links or subscribe to my channel for updates. Additionally, if you want to support the effort, you can share this video. Vultures could use the appreciation. I want to thank you for watching. Earth has many magnificent creatures that need to be protected. And protection starts with appreciation and knowledge. And that starts here. See you next time.